Welcome to the Tech Talk Show, live the next only official podcast. Uh, we missed out last week because everyone was busy, but we're back with catching up with the news. I've got Andrew Byron, you know, the usual guesses here. <laughs> yeah, the usual voices. Uh, I'm looking at you guys. Okay, fine, fine. okay. okay. anyway, so let's work backwards. Um, I was away, so what happened? Right, so you were away in India. How was the Brandy, by the way? Brandy was brilliant. <laughs> right, this is something we missed uh, talking about last week because we didn't forget. We always did that. Okay, we actually didn't have time. No, uh, we were really, really busy. So. Uh, but. The, well, Xiaomi has like a bunch of service centers. Uh, they just closed down the flagship one in Plaza uh, They closed it about a week and a half ago. It's on the 15th of May. And we only found out about this because uh, one of the readers, readers tipped us. And just so happened the next day, uh, Chapri was uh, had a meeting in Maya Plaza. And he went upstairs for himself. And he guessed, it's true. It's closed down. It is not an indicator that the company is like dwindling down operations here in Asia. It's actually the fact that this is a service center that's operated by a third party company called Meserve and apparently they are licensed for this uh, for to be the service provider uh, service provider yeah, uh, for Xiaomi has uh, expired. I didn't know that could happen. Yeah apparently yeah. like so they have this one and another one in Sarawak or Kuching something like that in Kuching uh, and it's also closed down around the same time. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they, like, there's no more service centers? Uh, well, they have a bunch of other ones. This is what they call the exclusive service center. So it's run by this particular company. Okay. Everything else is like outsourced to like other stuff. So the more popular one is the one in the Mall with PJ. So basically, if you have a smartphone from Xiaomi and you want to send it for warranty, the, if you're in the Valley, the only one left is in uh, Mcom Mall, PJ. That's not too bad. There are six <laughs> other ones around, it's five other ones around Malaysia. Uh, I, I don't think there's any in the East, East Malaysia. I think I'm not wrong. Uh, oh. But the article is up online about that, by the way, and <laughs> I should refer to it. It's actually funny, but because like a lot of people are taking this as like an, a sign that uh, the company is like, oh, you know, it's pulling back, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's not. It's, it's actually not. Like the the reason why the website is no longer up and running, selling stuff, is because they moved all their operations to Nevada. Mm-hmm. Which uh, kind of makes more sense. It for, makes for more sense. For it's yeah. low overheads for them. Correct. So they front all of this uh, online stuff uh, from Lazada, and they're also appointing like physical retail partnerships to have like reseller stores in physical retail. Oh, did I say that? Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically, they're not only going to have an online presence, they're going to have an, a, an offline presence as well. Which is basically what like companies like Oppo and Vijay have. Traditional sales method. Yeah. Yes. They're giving him. They're giving him. They're, they're joining the main What they realized was that like, they moved a little bit too quickly. Uh, in China, for example, uh, you have the, the, the online sales model is really, really mature, not the same in Malaysia. So mm-hmm. until that happens, I think they are slowly moving towards the physical side, uh, physical retail side, it's just so that. Just so until like, you know, the market matures a little bit. I don't, I don't think it's so much they're waiting for it to mature anymore. That, Maybe they realize that the online sales system doesn't quite work outside of China. Uh, it, well, technically it does. Um, no, we had a report. Remember, the whole online spending thing has been increasing a lot. No, but no, but the way the way they carried it is well, they're still running through Lazada, so yeah. Uh, but you know, they might be scaling back how they're doing this because you have to remember, have to remember that the way they were doing it was irritating a lot of people. Uh, well, the flash sales model was obviously was terrible s- because they had no choice. That was one, right? Because they yeah. had to like they had limited units for production each round, and uh, they're and they only going to make it worse by letting everyone know about it. Correct. So uh, they've moved away from the flash sale model for quite some time. Yeah. And then they've appointed like basically they're working with Lazada to be like an official, more like an official, like handling the back end business of the online sales model. Um, physical re- retailers are going to be working with Xiaomi as well, also on the back end and on the front end. So they're handling the back end, the front end. Yeah, they, yeah, pretty much. So it's 
Xiaomi is no longer actively handling the sales in that sense. Which is fair, I guess. Yeah. It's more like a point and should be the correct. And to be fair, I think like from the Redmi Note 4 sales, actually it's been like the stocks are still there, like you still buy it online and in physical outlets, I'm not too sure about physical outlets. But like online on Lazada especially, there are mm-hmm. a lot of Redmi Note 4. Yeah, that, that, that could mean many things. That yeah. could mean that, that their supply yeah. chain is really good. Correct. Yeah. Could mean that no one's buying any of it. Yeah. Not so lah. I mean, <coughs> the ones that are still available is the three gig model, the four gig RAM one is the one that's uh, right. a little bit more rare. Okay. So that's that. Speaking of Xiaomi, Xiaomi. What about Xiaomi? Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> the Mi Max Two. Mm-hmm. Uh, second generation, huge phone. 6.44 inches across. <laughs> uh, okay. 1080p display. It runs on a Snapdragon 625. Yeah. Not quite as capable as the Snapdragon 650. Mm-hmm. The first Mi Max was running on a 650, right? Yes. Okay. I I was confused when I saw this headline. I thought it said Mi Mix. Oh no! Uh, what? No. I was hoping for that. I was like, no, wait, it's a Mi Max. Oh come on! People were troubled with that. That's not that's not what I want. It's just one letter away, so. Yeah, that's, that's not exciting anymore. Yeah. Well, I don't think really it's it's meant for people like us. It's like a 6.44 inch. It's like you're trying mm-hmm. to prove something. I don't know. Anyway, we will not go there. It's a 6.44 inch phone. It's uh, compensating for something. I mean, okay. it's got a 5,300 million hour battery. Yeah, so that's it's a huge. Battery. 4 mm-hmm. gigs of RAM, uh, 64, 28 gigs of uh, internal storage with a micro SD card slot. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly, it's got the same 12 megapixel camera as on the V6, but yes. without a secondary camera. Yes. Uh, 5 megapixel front facing camera and the UI 8. Mm-hmm. What else is there? Like, I'm pretty sure that's just like, it's just that's the, the whole, yeah, full metal unit really body. It's more like uh, a any slight yeah, it's an incremental update right, yeah. from the original image. Mm-hmm. It runs on a metal body, it has a metal body, sorry. Yeah. Uh, base model 64 gigs retails for 1699 UI. Mm-hmm. That's about 1055 ringgit here. The mm-hmm. one to eight gig model will go for three hundred yuan more, which is one thousand nine hundred ninety nine yuan, one thousand, which is about RM one two four five. Not mm-hmm. sure yet whether it's going to be launched globally, but I think we're more interested in the Mi six coming to Malaysia since it's been registered on Serum already. Yes, we'll talk more about that later. Yeah, no, but no, but I would say on the Mi Max. Right. I use the Mi Max for a while. Yes, uh-huh. and I love the huge battery. Yeah. Uh, that's anything else that's huge that you have. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> At the time it was, uh, it's a 4008 million, 4850 I think. Yes, yeah. 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 So yeah. this is like two day battery life. Perfect. Easily, right? Just so, in your pocket though. Yeah, I think it does. If I'm standing up, yes. yes. Oh wow. <clears throat> you yeah, there's a lot of jokes that can be made right now. But uh, seeing how it's transitioning from the 650 to the 625, the battery life would be improved by quite a bit. Even and more than, and because of the, mm-hmm. uh, even more than just the battery increase. Yeah, and yeah. the battery size increase, it <coughs> change to a more power efficient processor. So I imagine it'll be two or three days easy. Oh, maybe. That's, that's, what was this thing called? Sorry. In one hour, you can charge it from 0 to 68% because it supports mm-hmm. quick charge 3.4. There's also something called parallel charging. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, so what, what is parallel charging? Yeah, I have no idea what this pattern <laughs> is. Come on, Andrew. Come on, Andrew. You're not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? The thing is, some devices don't really charge fast. Okay, I'm going to assume parallel charging. Sorry, Andrew. Uh-huh. I'm going to assume that you can charge other devices using this phone. Does it use a USB Type-C? I will search for this. I think I'm assuming it is. USB micro, micro USB. Micro USB. Anyway, I don't right think it's micro I USB. I have no idea what this means. I wasn't here. Uh, also, I just googled this, and it's all about how to parallel charge your battery without blowing it up. There you go. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> while while we're googling this, what else is going on? Hold on. I'm always. I can see. I can see. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's that point. Type C one micro. Okay. <laughs> You failed me, Andrew. Hey man, it's a lot of things going on this week. Yeah. We will get to soon. Yes, so get to something. What's up? Yes. Alright, so we got the name soon? Yes, there's not much there. <laughs> Alright, so <clears throat> Sony Malaysia launched two new phones uh, on our shelves. 
the Xperia XZ Premium as well as the XA1 Ultra. So the XZ Premium goes for 3399 so that's 100 more than a certain device. It's called the Galaxy S8. Yeah. So you're allowed to say what it is. Anyway, so that's the main problem with this phone. Uh, the fact that it's priced 100 million more than the S8, which is considered one of the best phones in the market now. And in terms of specs, sure, uh, it has a Snapdragon 25, really fast phone, a 4K HDR display. It's in terms of spec, yes, but if you look at the phone, the large bezels and the very polished back panel, the very glossy, yeah, extremely fingerprint prone. It's, uh, no, it's an exterior. That is true. No, it's the you you can't say anything about the design because. The moment you say Xperia, people know what it looks like. And, and people have decided whether they like it or not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really the thing that I don't really like about the phone. I mean, sure. Is it's it because it looks like every other Xperia that's ever made? <laughs> yeah, but See, I no, like, to be fair, yeah, like, <laughs> this looks like the Xperia X, the Z5 Premium. So the, the premium models, they have like a mirror finish. Mm -hmm. uh, chrome, not chrome, chrome? Chrome, it looks chrome. It's yeah, mirror it's finish. Chrome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, no, it. The, the styling, yeah, the, the design, design language is always going to be the same. Mm -hmm. right. So people have to decide whether they like it or not. If you yeah. like it, you're going to buy it. If not, you know, you would have stopped buying these things two years ago. Well, a lot of people don't buy Sony phones for another reason. Anyway, uh, <laughs> well, well yeah, sure. I think pricing aside, like they have to price this a little bit higher because this is what they call a premium flagship smartphone. Yeah. So. 3399 also, again, uh, it's slightly more than the Galaxy S8. Mm -hmm. um, to be fair, it's 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 you probably should be looking at the X S eight plus, plus. Ah, sure, because of the yeah. display size. The display size is small. Yeah. I mean, like five point eight is like uh, the, the real estate is still smaller. Mm -hmm. yeah. So apart from five point five, four K HDR capable display. Mm -hmm. uh, the only concern is actually the battery, right? Small ish. It's actually okay. It's not too bad. Yeah. It's a three thousand two hundred thirty milliamp battery. Three to three zero. Yeah. Which bad. for five point five inch display is actually quite small. That's, yes. I mean, that's one of the concerns, but mm -hmm. like on the other hand, like the way they're mitigating this is, it sounds like it, uh, the display is goes to a standard full HD display yes. for the most part until you open certain apps, correct? Yeah, that's a for key, which I don't think is. Uh, okay, so there are a number of them. Really? Yes, I right. remember this because I was at FLC. Anyway, okay, four <laughs> K app, four uh, K resolution only kicks in when you're playing the the default video player. Mm -hmm. And Amazon Prime Video. Not even Those are the only really? two. Amazon because Prime. Amazon Prime Video supports 4K HDR. Okay. And not like YouTube because it doesn't have HDR. Uh, Netflix, I'm not too sure. I know Netflix has 4K. I'm not sure whether Netflix has HDR yet. No, Netflix only plays in 4K if you're on a Skylake processor. Oh, there you go. So that's why there's no 4K anyway. Okay. So it only runs for two apps so far. Um, otherwise. Do we get Amazon Prime Video here? If I uh, yes, you can. Because it has oh, yeah, the top recent, tier, yeah. top tier. The, the, what's the, what's the, 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 the Grand Tour. The Grand Tour, yeah. yes. <laughs> right. So you can actually do that. Uh, I don't think anybody remembers we have that. Yes. Here's the thing. Wait. This is, yeah, because that's the only reason why you get yeah, something on the show. Yeah. So what else is there about this camera? Oh, it runs on the same camera, right? As uh, as yes. So a nice CCFS, mm -hmm. no more video recording. It's got motion eye. Motion eye, yes. I think so. Motion. It, I gotta say though, it's really cool. Like that 960 FPS thing sure, that you, you run down. It only works well when the lighting is. Lighting is <laughs> it works well only when the lighting is very good. Otherwise, you get very grainy, noisy. I think the whole shots. point of it is you want to see that effect, that slow motion yeah, effect. Yeah, sure. I mean, but how often would you shoot it? How often would you shoot slow motion videos in low light? Why are you shooting low light? Sh no. Uh, Why are you no, because I believe the idea is that if you're going to be using this feature, mm -hmm. you are going to be setting up the optimal conditions for it. Yes, correct. So that's not really a problem because yeah, you know the limitation you're saying, I need to get around these uh, things. I don't know. It's, that's what he's saying. No, I mean, in terms of tech, sure, it's very impressive, but then it's, Sony is just, it needs to change up the design somewhat. He's just really bothered about how it looks. It's so ugly, come on. It's I, don't, I don't believe it's ugly. Yeah. But I believe that it's very dated. And a quiet taste. No, 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 no,
you would have already acquired it Correct. because they keep using it. Oh gosh. But it's so dated. It's uh, I've seen this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try something new, right? Because it's been around since the first Z. Wow, Z series. Because it's the Z series that started this angular square thing. Yeah, and that was four years ago. Then it went to no oh. lah. It was that. It's not that old. Uh, it's about twenty. 2013, 2014. Yeah, because I remember like. No, 2014, that was already the Z3. 2013, I said 13. Oh, okay, fine. And you know, they, they cycled two phones a year. Yeah. So Z1, Z2 was in 2013, 2014 was the Z3. Yep. Uh, Z4? No, that's no, Z3. No, 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 they jumped. Z4 was in Japan only or something like that. Japan, yes. Japan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Very sleepy. Anyway, Z4, and then there was Z5, and then Z5 Premium. Then from there, they stopped because they went to like the X which mm. supposedly has a brand new design language which turns out to be the same. I mean, it's new in a way. Then they combined it. No, they, they were like talking about how this is a new Correct. direction for the Yes, I remember this one. And then yeah. they... Then you didn't believe them back then. Correct. Then after that, they called it the Xperia XZ. 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 Still an XZ. Which still looks yeah, the, the same. same. So, um, it's not so much that the tech underneath is not great. It's just that I think the package uh, has everyone like kind of feeling like, eh, you know? They, they really need to mix it up. Yeah, because like if you look at, I think the biggest problem that Andrew has right now, people like Andrew, is that he's seen the Galaxy S8 and the LG Z6. He's mm -hmm. like, shit. Like all other phones look really old now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so like, I That's want basically. Yeah. I want something new, something special. Yeah. I'd say even compared to the Mi 6, the XZ premium just doesn't look that good. But you didn't like the XZ Premium, the, the V6 anyway. We're going to talk about that later. I like it okay. better than the XZ Premium very much. Okay. Sure. Okay, anyway, moving on. on. What else we have? Uh, we also have the fact that Sony is discontinuing the, its, what they call the Premium Standard Series of phones. Which is the lower end ones. That's no, not no, 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 not low end, no, no, no. Uh, mid range, yeah, yeah, mid range, mid range ones. ones. Oh, come on. No, really. Okay, so. Uh, the premium set of phones, there are really two, the uh, Xperia X and the Xperia X Compact. Correct. So Xperia yes. X was running on what chipset? 650. Correct. Yes, Apple Redmi Note 3 was running on what chipset? 650. Correct. Well. How much is the Redmi Note 3? That's a trick question. Mm. And how much is the Xperia X? And you die for me. How dare you say that? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. I don't blame them for discontinuing this because who the hell was buying it in the first place? Yeah. 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 You know one person is going to buy a compact phone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a big enough market. Yeah. No. One person yeah. is, does not make the market. Mm. Outside of Japan, actually. Like Japan, Japanese people still love no, right. As I mentioned, Japan is special, yes. Japan doesn't count. Okay. okay. But, it's count. but yeah, like, yeah. it's a good move because no one's, like, it just wasn't, it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, these it's things, too expensive for they one existed in the first yes. place. Uh, no, so, I mean, it, it, would, it would make sense if it was less than 2000 again. Xperia mm -hmm. X was like 2499. I think it's 2199. No, I, I, I mean, like when it was launched, it was that price. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was I, expensive. I remember, yes. I remember the Xperia X, I was wondering why it's placed at almost flagship prices. Yeah. Uh, for no one reason. One thing to justify is the fact that it has the same camera as X Performance. Gee, yes, yeah. the X yeah. Performance, correct, the phone mm -hmm. that never launched. In Malaysia, no. Well, I don't know, it's very limited anyway. Right? No, yeah, it's only on a snap rate of 10, was it? 8 to 20. Yeah, but then. That's not any metric. But then the exit. No, it's not going to be like 8 and it's like, it's like, like, the, it's like the, the master channel. The top of the processes, yes. 8 to 6. Yeah. What's the end one? The lower end one. But yeah, they just continue these two. Like Mi 4i? Yeah, what's the chance on the Mi 4i? 610, I think. Kind of 600 something. 600 something, yeah. Kind of 6. Anyway. Uh, okay, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. They removed, they, they discontinued uh, these things. Yes. Are right. they replacing or anything or just like no, saying, you know, we're so doing it? What they're doing is they're going to retain the flagship device, obviously, as well as the mid range ones, which are the XA1 XA1 one and XA1 Ultra. XA1 is how much again? Um, what is it? 1,005, I don't know. XA1 Ultra is 1,800. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. I guess it's a good move. It's a good move from Sony. Yeah. But I was reading this very interesting thing for you. Bloomberg, like how uh, the currency of Kazuo here, right? Uh, like Cass, how yeah. Cass, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. Apparently, in five years, he's actually turned the company around. Um, one of the things that was one of the things that he did was not only downsizing the company's staff, he also downsized the portfolio of every single department. So from TVs to like smartphones and. Well, gaming stuff. So mm -hmm. The gaming. Doesn't really count. I don't know. He did the gaming. Yeah. 
the PSP yeah. card is barely mentioned anymore. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> what he did was that he reduced the portfolio everything to reduce the running cost for every division. And he basically turned around. And if it wasn't for the the North Koreans hacking the, the entertainment side, they would have yeah. turned a the profit there as well. Yeah. Mm. Well, it, I'm sorry, it is picking up again. Mm. Like, uh, yeah. They're not they're doing bad things. Yes. No, they're, they're actually being propped up by PlayStation, but still, they're yeah. not doing bad things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's the console business that's keeping them alive. Yeah. Your PlayStations are funding your phones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The yeah. phone business. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. yes, what else do we have? I think we forgot about something very good today. Which one? There's a new game that came out. Oh my new god. New game? Yeah. Magic Art Jump. Some Magic Art Jump? Magic Art Jump. Magic Art. I think it looks like okay, this it, game. Okay, it didn't come out. It didn't come out today. Yeah. It came out a few days ago. Right? Um, it yeah. launched. It was a soft rollout. Right. Uh, Japan got it first. Okay. I've been playing it for three days now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. My girlfriend found it and then just like, oh wow, this is running. <laughs> and I've killed about four of my Magic Cup already. How did it work? Okay, so, I, I've seen that preview. Okay, okay, this is a very, this is the most hardcore Pokemon game I've ever seen. <laughs> Pokemon oh, die here. It's not the case. Oh, wow. So what it happens is it's really weird thing that you're supposed to um, train magic up to jump. And by feeding them and training them. That sounds and, completely logical, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. So there are these random encounters mm-hmm. where you can actually j- gain extra jumping points for magic up. Or if things go wrong, it gets carried out by a PGO and dies. Nice. But literally you never see it, you never see that. Oh, it gets blown up by Hotor. Wow. Oh, okay. But I've seen the game, and it looks a lot like Mola Mola, in some ways. It's a combination of Mola Mola and a uh, really weird competition. <laughs> but it is dark. Your Pokemon will die. They yeah. understand, in this universe, Pokemon die. Horribly and in very random ways. Don't, <laughs> I, don't don't think, I don't think people care that Magic Up dies. I do! Really? I was training a damn thing. <laughs> okay. Even my video though. So Andrew's yeah. gonna play the game. Uh, probably when he can. Maybe. Then he's gonna okay, we're probably gonna do an app review about this. Uh, we should do this one. The last app review we did is actually Pokemon Go, I think. Yeah, I think yeah, we Pokemon Go. Yeah, great. We're yeah. gonna continue our stream of Pokemon Go. Good stuff, Andrew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll but, we'll talk about this after that. Yes. Okay. But on a more 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 serious more serious note, Microsoft announced a new service pro. Right. Mm. They're calling it the new Surface Pro. They just call it the Surface Pro. Yeah. Now they're calling it Surface Pro 4 Enhanced or Surface Pro 5. Four I don't know. It's just yeah. Surface Pro. Because they're saying that it's, it's, it's not just an incremental update and stuff it's, like that. And I remember that I was reading something about that. Okay. So they're saying there's like 800 new custom parts on this thing. It's a completely new machine. And they're going to put a Type-C connector. No, I no. think the reason why it's probably going to... Okay, we're going to get to that later. We're going to get to that later. That's a different story. But so, they've got the new Service Pro, which, um, you know, the, has its own M3, i5, i7 things. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. still technically the same thing, but it's all incremental improvements. Yeah. Right. The real kicker here is the fact that it now works with the. Do you remember the Surface Dial? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, is this going to be. They've actually mentioned that it. This Surface Dial is going to support the Surface Pro 4 as well because it's actually not a software thing. Yeah. It actually just has like five uh, like capacitive rubber things. So it's all actually, if I'm not wrong, I think it's the creators update that enables it. Probably the creators update. Because the Surface Dial is actually nothing but a piece of plastic. It is, but yeah, so we're getting um, Surface Dial support here as well. Mm. More stuff. Um, it's got new tight cover keyboards which with the Alcantara fabric. Yes. Uh, I, someone needs to explain to me why this fabric is... So, awesome. I read somewhere, it's actually like synthetic suede. Synthetic suede that does not uh, degrade over time. Uh, and it's meant to be more hard, like tougher than suede, basically. Okay, uh, sure. So, it doesn't, it's water resistant compared to suede. <laughs> okay. But it retains the feel of suede. And, uh, I never said suede more often. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I can't remember, it was like 30% polyester or something like that. Like there's, a, there's a mix of fabrics in there okay. that makes it more resistant over time. So this is not so much it feels nicer as this will take the beating for it. Yeah, it feels nice it. and it will take the beating. Uh, okay. So there's two very important things about the, this new service, the 2017 service pro. There's a Windows 10S version coming. Oh, God. Really? 
That's how you sort the devices. No, that's right. education. You can print it cheaper. It's, 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 it's not, not expensive. expensive. Device. Oh, maybe the M3 version. It's probably the M3 version. And we know it upgraded to a Pro later anyway. Yeah. Right. No, Windows 10. Windows 10 Home. You can upgrade it from the Windows 10 S to something more useful. Actually useful. Uh -huh. Second thing is, um, it appeared on the Malaysian Microsoft Store for a while. Correct. For a while. So you was know, It's kind of there, and then we kind of. So here's the story. It appeared on uh, the Microsoft Store in Malaysia. Yeah. And like so website, right? Yeah. Yeah. And disappeared for a while. Then it just disappeared. Oh. So uh Chapri doing his usual thing, yeah. started, you know, harassing Microsoft for answers. <laughs> they wouldn't say no. Oh. But they didn't say yes either. So isn't it's probably coming sooner than we think it is. Yeah, because like if I'm not wrong, the only other product on the Microsoft website is the Surface Pro 4. Yes. That's all they have at the moment. But mm. the new 2017 <coughs> Pro is there, was there for a very short time, so it's it's coming, it's coming sooner than we think it is. Okay. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Which might mean, you know, forgetting the dial as well. <laughs> well, <Wow. laughs> really. come on, it's going to drop eventually. I don't know. It's a software thing. You can software. actually, like, you can actually mimic it with your fingers <coughs> if you if you move it around. We try it. Studio. Does it work? Yes. <laughs> as, long as, the, as long as the pressure on all five fingers is consistent and mm -hmm. you move it the same way, like basically you're just mimicking the surface down. But you need the, the right shot. positions, right? No. Surprisingly, oh. you only need like five points and they're moving like. Right. I yeah. see. Okay. That's good to know. I think it's really good. Like, I was surprised because the surface yeah. down actually does not feel like solid metal, like a block of metal. It's actually just plastic and it's actually very light. I'd be afraid they will stop putting like a lot of metal on my display. <laughs> so it's just that and like a like a like a unique design rubber thing for the outside. Okay. Sure. Hmm. Okay. That's cool. But yes. Uh, now getting back to why it doesn't have the USB type, the USB yes. Type C, and well, my extension the Thunderbolt three design. Uh -huh. It's because so here's the story. Intel is going to make Thunderbolt three. Um, Royalty free. They they make go turn into standard royalty free. That means anyone anyone can start developing, anyone can start building chips mm -hmm. without having to pay royalties to Intel. Mm -hmm. This is a big thing because it means we'll probably see more Thunderbolt three, more uh, USB Type C uh, connectors out yeah. there in the market. Okay. USB Type C connectors supporting Thunderbolt three. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's the that's huge. That is huge. Like from a manufacturing point of view, that finally will allow people to it standardize it cheap. Okay. and make it cheaper. So look, the problem now is, this is a bit too full. Uh, <coughs> the problem now is because uh, to support Thunderbolt 3, you need a separate chip mm -hmm. on the motherboard, yeah. which okay. generally is inc increases the cost, increases design problems if you have to find space for it on the motherboard, uh -huh. especially if you're trying to shrink things down, it drives people crazy. Uh -huh. um, going forward, starting from the next generation of chips, Intel will be building Thunderbolt 3 support into the processor. Okay. So that's all for yes. yeah. And then they're going to make it royalty free to expand on this thing. Mm -hmm. Like they did with USB when they first yeah. it out. It's, 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 it's very important actually. Yes. Um, yeah. Then finally, because the reason why the Surface Pro is not, does not have USB Type C is because that is one of the reasons. Because yeah. USB Type C has many configurations, like many standards. There's no one standard in terms of yeah. the power throughput and data transfer. Yeah, because it's it's just connector. Correct. It's nothing it's else. Just a connector. So some people can put a USB Type C connector and it can still run on USB 3 port. It can be actually running on USB 3.0 standards. Yeah. yeah. So that was the case with the first correct Yes. Yes. So the idea <coughs> of it now is if you make Thunderbolt 3 available to everyone, mm -hmm. everyone can easily adopt a single standard mm -hmm. and use that. Single connector. For yeah. So you've got one connector, you've got one standard. Hopefully, this sorts it out. And, but since this is only happening next year, <laughs> not yet. Not we're yet. not going to see any improvements for at least another year, 12, 18 yeah. months. Because right. you know, you have to get your soil royalties, you have to build mm -hmm. the chips, you have to strip them. <clears throat> it's going to be a while. But maybe we'll see more external GPU housings. Oh, man. Imagine. Yes. My, my dream is that the Surface Pro with external GPU attached to it. 
So a lot of manufacturers come has come up have come up with their own, but it's like it never really got. There's no lot. There's no not a lot of traction. Yeah, right. Right. because it's expensive. It's Amazon expensive. had one. Razer had one. Razer had one as well. Yeah. But you remember, it's expensive and there's nothing mm. to support it. Yeah. Right. Um, how, many, how many computers do you know have Thunderbolt? Not USB Type C connectors. Thunderbolt yeah. three. Actually, quite a lot. Our express thing is the USB C supports Thunderbolt three. Mm. Uh, but you cannot draw power from it. <laughs> what? What's the point then? Because it uses a proprietary network, like the old school power connector, so you can't draw power. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so you, you can't so, uh, draw power, but you can transfer power. Like you can power something from it. Like you mean like any other USB port? Yes, but the 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 different one that draws higher, the power draws higher. Probably because, because you can. Really, I see. You can have so my adapter for the Dell the XPS it has LAN, gigabit LAN, HDMI, and two more USB ports. It's not bad. Yeah, but you can't really power anything. But I'm really excited for what yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely this is going to be now. This is the way forward. This is where we're going to go. It's slow, but it's going somewhere. Well, that's Let's how USB started out. Yeah. Yep, Intel started with USB. And you know Apple's going to push this agenda as well. Right. Oh, it's just they're deciding on one. Yeah, common. Common. <laughs> common. <laughs> uh, lightning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um. I think there's one more piece of news that we could yes. really talk about. Mm-hmm. The DJI Spark. Right. The tiny drone. <coughs> Surprise everyone, actually. This is awesome! <laughs> Andrew has no idea. I know, I know it's smaller than the other DJI drone that can remember. Great. Sure. So, <laughs> is that uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> Mavic Pro is smaller, yes. Uh, it's smaller than Mavic Pro. It's very, very small, right? It's what size of Sony can. It's meant to, it's <laughs> meant to hook to your belt. As you walk around. Okay, but yeah. seeing how it's so tiny and light, like wouldn't like it be more prone to wind changes and stuff like that? Probably. Yeah. I mean so the idea about the DJI Spark isn't that you're going to do a lot of uh, heavy duty <coughs> camera work with it. This is more of like your, your personal drone. Yeah, it's cost about the same as a smartphone, right? Two thousand bucks. The money for the drone though. Huh? Still a money for the drone though. Uh, it's not no, too bad actually. For a drone of this caliber, yeah. No, okay, so no, for a drone of this caliber, it's not <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, what, what's the use? Like, what's the uh? Think people can uh, fly uh, it up and like fly to your head and tell you this is how heavy the drone is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. So this is meant to be your personal drone. Uh-huh. It's meant for say you want to take a more advanced selfie of yourself. Oh, you can yeah. pre, you, it's more of a casual. Yeah, it's device. got pre-programmed flight modes, so it can take off. And you want to do something, you can circle around. Mm-hmm. You can control it with your hands, like push it around. You have to recognize your hand, you can tell them over there, you can tell them to come back to you. What? Yeah. That's cool. It only works on about three meters away. Oh, okay. It's so, selfie range. Yeah. So you can um, yeah, take it over to your right. I need you, or right, the photos over, come back to me, land on my hand. It lands on your hand. Okay. Because it's, it's your personal drone. It's not meant for camera work. It's meant for selfies. It's meant for bloggers. Mm-hmm. It's meant for being taken on vacation. Yeah, I said this is going to be pretty useful for like those YouTubers and vloggers who are like dependent on small products. Yeah. Yeah. This would be great, great for conventions and just taking right. camera shots. Yeah. The aerial stuff. But then again, I don't think you're allowed to do that in conventions. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's really bad fighting. Like, wait, wait, I think yes, if you can control it, it'll be fine. Because that thing was really not con- like at CS, uh, the reason why they got banned from flying it was because they can't control it. Okay. Yeah. No, you need to apply for a permit to fly it, even if it was. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. They didn't get that permit. Right. So, I mean, you could always ask for permit to fly and it was a good for this convention. Yeah. Yeah. And it's 500 USD. So, Malay, someone already delivered uh, the, the, the device for pre order. Yes. Supposedly coming in June or July, mid June or July, uh, for 2,399 yeah. It's really reasonable for a drone. Yeah. Considering that a lot of DJI drones are like twice the price. The Mavic Pro is about twice the price. Yeah, yeah. 4,000. Yeah, yeah, but it's also like, yeah. I want to see twice as usable, but... No, we don't count it that way. I know. <laughs> I, I'm not sure how you're counting the <laughs> usability here. Uh, right. But no, it's not 
man, like this is actually meant for people like you, Andrew. Like, like it's a consumer no, it's design. It's clearly not, not meant for him, but like you know, he, they are like he is like the sort of target market, the, yeah. the okay. young, technologically savvy consumer. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I assume that this is also going to be great for say college students. Yeah. If those still doing their degrees, they need some. Even those who are doing like that multimedia stuff, multimedia yeah. studies and stuff, wow, this is super useful. Yeah, man. I mean, wow. pull together, grab one for the class, you're done. You can take aerial shots now. Uh, At any given time. Yeah. It can track you. Right. Yes, it is actually, it, it can track and follow you. That's scary at all. Okay. No, no, trust me. I don't know why you're scared, but. <laughs> it, it does not have machine guns on it. Ah, yeah. It's too small to have weapons. Uh, Trust me, it's too small. Okay. And it was going to get a 22 caliber, it won't kill you. It may hurt you. But uh, there's one small drawback about having uh, such a tiny drone. Battery life. Yes. Okay, so I'll make like but it's quite 16 high. minutes. 16 minutes. Yeah, it's not too bad. Well, 16 minutes, depending on what you mean. Yes. Okay. So the oh, idea okay. is DJI is going to sell you replaceable batteries. Yeah, but yeah, that's right. Like, it's 16, even if it's 16 minutes, it's not that. Right? Because the Magic Pro is about 20 plus. Yeah, per charge is about 20 plus minutes. But still, it's, it's a bit small. small. Yeah. I mean, compared to toy drones, that has like, what, 5 10 minutes of flight time? I'm horrible going to toy drones. I'm not going to toy drones. It's the same size. This is nowhere near the toy drone. Yeah, it has a camera this, there and tracking capabilities. This is the first truly consumer drone. Yeah, and it runs, it can use, it connects to the same app as the mainstream DJI. Drones. I think you want to get the controller control. too, right? Okay, no, so there's three ways of controlling it. Uh -huh. uh, you've got the app, uh -huh. which has a limited range. Uh -huh. I can't remember, it's very short, it's got an intermediate range. Okay. Not very far. About 30 feet? 80 feet? From that? 80 meters. 80 meters. So then you've got the controller, uh -huh. which uh, gives it up to a mile distance. Oh. So. This can go up to 31 miles per hour. I'm going from the press release. So yeah. It's miles per hour. It's probably about like 50 kilometers or so. That's fast. Yes, but you can't fly that far. No, you can fly and reach speeds up to. What's that speed? You don't want these options. It's got GPS speed. as well. So I'm assuming no, that. So, so the, you're using a controller, it flies up to a mile. Mm -hmm. 1.6 kilometers around there. If you're using your hand, it's about 3 meters. Okay. But that means you don't actually need your anything else to control it. Yeah. Okay. Because it launches from your hand. Mm -hmm. You can control it from your hand. Cool. Yeah, cool. You to and hand. it has a two axis gimbal. Mm -hmm. Captures full HD. Chop your Yeah, just the uh, image is going to be great. Uh let's see. Full HD, what is it actually say? I don't think it's no okay though. I don't it's think it's that tiny. Exactly. Oh, now you say it's not necessary, yeah. Wow. Toy so drone is not. Oh my god. <laughs> it is a consumer for that. I don't think 4K shooting is really all that important. But you see, you're coming around to our line of thinking. You yeah. see the amazing yeah. mechanical yeah. yeah. Okay. Mechanical jibbo, powerful lens. We should get one for it. Oh, yeah. yeah. We should. We're pretty sure our boss is going to it anyway. Yes, but he's not going to. It's going to be his drone. <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to let us use it. Mikey? Wow. <laughs> Channel focus, 50k. 50 kilometers an hour. Two yeah. kilometer Wi-Fi video transmission. Wow. Sixteen minutes flight time, correct? Not bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has return to home, flight protection, flight economy. It's pretty legit. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Fourteen thousand ringgit. I mean, I would buy it if a certain game wasn't coming to the Switch. Monster. 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 I mean, no. it's, it's still technically just a Japanese release though, right? Like, yes. Do you read Japanese? Hey, I could learn. Better start. I mean, you don't really need to read Japanese to play one star. Very wrong. It's like a lot of other Japanese stuff, you don't have to learn the language. Oh, you don't know gosh. Yeah. Anyway, yes. That's the news, the uh, extended edition of the news. We will be right back with Pam telling us a story. We're back, and Pan is supposed to tell us a story about why he went to Singapore. I was in Singapore for less than 24 hours. Let's talk about this. So, <laughs> was it really less than 24 hours? I flew in at 8.40 p.m. Uh -huh. 
p.m. I feel at 6.45 p.m. the next day. That is impressive. Yeah. But it's Singapore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not that far. It's like 45 minutes away. It was fine. Uh, I was there to see the new Apple Store. Yay. No, it's not called the Apple Store. It's called... Stop typing. <laughs> Sorry, I was there to see the new Apple Store. It's not called the Apple Store. It's called uh, Apple Orchard Road. Really? Okay. Correct. Um, they removed the store. Okay. Uh, I think about the, the, the store moniker, I think about a year ago when they redesigned, when Johnny Art came over and redesigned like, the major stores. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, Apple San Francisco, Apple, this, Apple, Apple Ginza. So now it's Apple, Apple Orchard Road. Apple Orchard Road. Because I don't think they want to call it Apple Singapore because that's what the company name is. Anyway, Not Apple sure. Orchard Road. <laughs> it's in Orchard Road, obviously. Gee, I wouldn't have guessed. It's huge. Double story, glass windows from top to bottom. Mm-hmm. Both floors, basically. So it looks like every other Apple store. It looks like every other Apple store. Yeah, you go inside, time. it looks like every other Apple store. But, to be fair, the Apple stores are actually very nice. They're very nicely designed. They are. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're very nicely designed, but you've seen one, you've kind of seen them all. Yeah, but for some reason, people are still going to go for it. Like, it, it's, like a, it's like an establishment. Like, it's, if you're in the town, it's a pilgrimage. Yes. You have to go to a lot of people, wow. they actually go visit. <laughs> oh, for sure. Like, I went to San Francisco, I went to see that person. I went to New York, I went to see that person. Uh, to be fair, the New York one is Temple. Uh, that's, that's there are two, actually, in New York. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I don't care for Apple at all. Uh-huh. I've been in three Apple stores. There you go. Oh, okay. The New York one was the cool one. The Fifth Avenue one is 24 hours, and the ground level you see mm-hmm. a glass cube. But that's the extra level. special one. That's the extra special one. It's open 24 hours. Everything is downstairs. Oh, so like the one in Shanghai where everything's also downstairs. Was it? Oh, yeah, I should go for it. Mm-hmm. That one. Yeah, it's a it's a pyramid. Oh, is that? Yeah, it's a pyramid. It's a yeah. glass pyramid, and everything's downstairs. Like the kind of. But yes, Singapore. <laughs> so what's special about Singapore? Uh, well, it's the first Apple store in the region, Southeast Asia. It's the official Apple store. The official one. So there are no reseller and reseller stuff that you see in uh, Malaysia and Singapore. Uh-huh. Funny thing is, they're still going to coexist in Singapore. The resellers are still going to be around. Um, so the biggest difference here is how, like, basically how they're trying to differentiate themselves from Apple store and reseller is the first floor. So the ground level is basically what you see from normal Apple stores. Mm-hmm. Uh, how Apple stores are designed is fairly uniform. You have like all these beautiful wooden tables and like you know very limited amounts of products because they want you to like really experience it. And they're all very nicely designed. I'm very very worried about the condition of the of the devices because I went to a reseller store before where they had an iPhone six. So iPhone six is metal bags, right? And the way they they they, they have they they place the phones are. Uh, the lighting connectors are jutting out yes. from the stand. Mm-hmm. So pe- and they're in this at an angle because you want the phones facing you. So when people put it back down, they always put it back down at a 90 degree thing. Mm-hmm. When the connector is not 90 degrees, but mm-hmm. they don't. But let's put it this way. It's an Apple store, you've got spares. It's painful to they look at spares. They, they, they look disease after a while, like the metal back just does not look metal anymore. <laughs> anyway. Uh-huh. Um, they were very pretty, like because obviously the store's not open yet. Uh, I was there on a Thursday last week, and it opened on Saturday. We would have been, would have been open for a few days now after this. Yes. Um, at the back of the ground floor is they have what they call uh, shop windows. The concept of shop windows. So they have nice like square areas for where they display stuff in a very nice way to attract people to come and buy. So each. Of these shop windows have like a specific theme, for example, Apple Watch or audio or accessories, covers, and like they're all designed to look very pretty. Is it, do, is it really necessary? It is. I mean, to be fair, fair, like to be fair, it doesn't look like a store because you don't see stocks anywhere. Yeah, because that's how Apple works. Yes. Yeah. And, and then you want it hidden away. Correct. And if you want it, like there's a there's a Apple Genius anywhere near you, and they're really really genuinely friendly. Uh, people. <laughs> so that's how they recruit That's, how, that's, that's how they get yeah. you. And apparently the difference for this one is that there are 237 people working in the Apple's, uh, Apple Orchard Road. They are mostly converted from people who are previously working in Apple Singapore. Okay. So uh-huh. uh, what they are saying is that the workforce for this store is more experienced than any other store openings. Because usually when you open a new store you get higher yeah, presence. Yeah. Yeah. This one is actually they're absorbing people from the from like the the resellers. No, the the 
then you know that's an Apple Singapore office, yeah. right? So from that Singapore office, they're mainly from like call centers and like product trainers and all that. They move them to the storefront. So they wow. are already product experts on their own. Wow. So they don't actually need to train them or anything. So that's why I mean, too, and like, I was talking to some of them and they were genuinely like, number one, passionate about the brand, but number two, they're damn smart. Like they know everything about product and they are also the ones who are responsible for running like um, the workshops and all that. We'll get to that at least on the first floor. That's the ground floor. Both sides of the of the store, there's this I don't know, I cannot ex- I cannot emphasize this enough. It's beautiful spiral staircases. <laughs> they are nice. from stone and the like the, the handrails are like carved from the stone itself, so it looks really nice and like Okay, yeah. our, our listeners don't actually have yeah, to imagine. You this. See, we, the, we posted up for We posted one. pictures on it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. an entire photo that's of this. Yes. Because it's beautiful. It's, it's really nice. Anyway. Uh, you got the first floor, and there's what they call the, the, the they call it the town square. Basically, it's a, it's a concept where all Apple community-driven activities are held there or starts from there. <coughs> but when they <coughs> Apple driven for you, they mean like a workshop. Basically, it's something new. Um, okay. Before this, um, like some stores have actually done this, where they have like. <coughs> Anyway, <clears throat> they have activities running in the store because some stores are open until night and all that. They have training workshops for like Mac and iPhone and, and like for example. Usually it's always like their software. Yeah. So they rebranded that last week. They call it Today at Apple. This is an initiative globally that um, has kicked off around the world. They will obviously kick off in Singapore when they start opening the store. Um, essentially, it's a series of classes workshops or anything that they, that they hold in the store and it's free for everyone. Not anyone who owns an Apple product, it's free for everyone. You just go to the website, register, if it's open, you can go for it. So there's stuff like photo walks, sketch walks, uh, workshops, coding classes, basically a lot of things that involve the, an Apple product. You don't have to own an Apple product to join. Which is kind of smart because it, that's how they get you. Yes, that's yeah. how they get you right there. So basically, they want you to understand and um, get to know the product, and from there, if you want it, you can actually buy it. <coughs> I would say it's very smart. Uh, so anyway, back to the design. There are trees on the first floor. They call it uh, Genius Grove. So it's a, it's a if okay, I've heard this before. Legit trees. Yeah, they're imported from Malaysia. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Okay. from Malaysia. Um, the trees are living, breathing plants. There are also trees outside the corridor, the walkway. There are eight trees. Yeah, they, they planted trees on the first floor. Yep. No, it's like basically like huge pots. pots. Um, and at the base of the pots, basically, is bench. It's a round bench around the. Uh, so they're called genius growth, uh, replacing the genius bar, where okay. it used to be just a table and like you know like a customer. Um, yeah, the really boring. You know, the really boring point of sale. The most stuff. boring part so, of the yeah. Apple Store. Yeah. This is like more chilled out, more relaxed. You can hang around there if you want. Then there are tables, which I've, like you've seen the, the, the magnetic thing where you move your hand, hover your hand over this square thing, and the, the, the power cables pop up. Or the power points pop up. Yeah. Oh, so mm-hmm. Anyway, they're all kind of the same because you've seen them. In, uh, we've, we've written about this back when they opened one in Brussels, Belgium. It's the first one that's designed by Johnny Ive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like they all follow the kind of the same concept. Uh, the design ethos. Yeah. Anyway, they're all the same. Uh, and basically, this area is free for everyone to come in. You can actually sit and like hang around if you want. You can charge your devices for free as well, if need be. Uh, okay. What else is there? That's about it. Really. Like it opens on the So that's the Apple Store. That's the Apple Store. So right how, many, how many of these do you plan on opening? Uh, right now, they are focusing on this one because they're saying that this is going to be one of nine high-profile Apple stores around the world. Mm-hmm. So they have about 500 Apple stores as of April last this year. Okay. In only 20 countries. I don't know if it's 20 countries. 20, 500 Apple stores in mm-hmm. No, it could be 20 countries. Be 10. I don't know. Like, but then you, can, you could put 400 in America. Yeah, it's a limited amount uh, of countries actually. Uh, but they have a daily visit count of over 1 million total. But it's 500 Apple stores. It's a pilgrimage, I tell you. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's a legit thing. When you go you, inside, and it's like. No, when you build an Apple store, 
it becomes like a landmark. It becomes something right. that tourists will come and see. It's true. Yeah. I, I wish I was kidding, but I've been in these places. Correct. I don't use Apple products. You just go in there like wow. It's, like, it's just the way that they 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 the way they design it, the atmosphere. It's very different. Yeah. Because I got in there. I've gone in there because I've been, you know, people, and it's friends of mine said, mm -hmm. yeah, we gotta go. Yeah. And you know, I, well, I'm curious. And you go in there. This was not a waste of time. That's right. It's very nice to do. Did you go to the one in Barcelona? Uh, we walked past it. Uh, our, our friends were there. Yeah. And went inside the floor, so. Wait, so you've never been in an Apple store? No. That's why. Not a single one. Standard. You cannot compare How? to the reseller stores. You cannot. No, no. How do you work here and have never set foot in an Apple store? Well, the good thing is with, he's not been to New York. So no, that is a car. True. Uh, the only one that's probably where he has been to was the Barcelona. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well, we never said it's in Yeah, I think mm -hmm. the closest to the bar, closest that we've been to the Barcelona Apple store was the McDonald's nearby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, that was good. But yeah, you, you need to put this you need to put this on your list. Yeah, one of those things where you just have to go to. Like right? uh, the first thing that they told me when I was in New York was go to the Apple Store to have you. Yeah. Okay. Cross twenty four hours. Right. It's it's very strange. Okay. Yeah. You you don't have to like it. Yeah. Go there. So like, yeah, you know what? Next time you're in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why do you have to go so far? Oh, wait, actually, he, uh, if it's going to E three, right? Like, Anyway, yeah, that's what I was saying. That's the thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's the other song. Uh, yeah, that's, Singapore's not that far away. Yes. It's, it's very weird. It's uh, six hours rather. What? No. Right? Like, First of all, no. Who <laughs> <laughs> It's not six hours, right? It's three hours. What? Four. Four. Oh, four. Come on. Let's obey the speed limit. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I should say about 300 kilometers. So you can make it three hours. You can make it to the Wonders checkpoint in yeah, okay. three hours. Yeah. Right. Four and one to get to the store. Uh, um, let's see. What else did I miss? Nothing much actually. So that is basically the Apple Store. They they are trying to differentiate themselves. This is how they see the future of retail, where you can not only buy the products, you are also experiencing them in the same space. Hmm. I can't. Oh, I'm how, just a little. No, how is that? <coughs> how well they always run their stores? Yeah, now they're kind of promoting even more. Like like just. This whole today at Apple thing is a huge global push. So the, the, what they're essentially saying here is we've rebranded everything we've already done. Yeah, it's just not. It's, it's, it's uh, if I I can't say for certain about this one, but um, the previous initiatives were like locked and reserved usually for members or something like that. Like you can't like or owners sorry members or yeah or you can't. It wasn't as high profile as it used to be. And it's a very American thing, actually, to be fair, like the yeah. way that they're going about this, experiencing the product um, without actually selling it to you. Like, it's, like for example, the photo walks, you're allowed to bring your own phone and join the lessons and, and walk with mm -hmm. them for free. If you, for example, want to try it with an iPhone, they'll lend you an iPhone. Oh, see, that's something. No, that's that's how how no, that, <laughs> that is the worst. That's not, like, that's how they, they hook you in, right? That's so, how drug dealers work. <laughs> Wow. Just it's free. Wow. Uh, for the sketch walks, they, uh, they, they'll loan you an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil. So they good. Drugs. <laughs> this is like drugs. I would say the best one, though, the, the, the best example they gave was uh, for the coding uh, workshops that they're going to hold in there. It's meant for kids because the coding app that they have is called Swift Playgrounds. Uh, it's aimed at kids right. as well. This one app that people want to buy an iPad for. Yes, because it's free. Hmm. But it teaches you how to code. Yeah, it makes sense actually. If, you're, <coughs> if you want your kids to learn to code, this is the best way to do it. Right. And well, since there's so much push to learn coding these days, they get through the curve. It's true. So they're like workshops, and they have like kids coming to the to the space. And one of the other examples that they told me was that yeah, if you see the photos, there are a lot of like wooden stools around. What they do is that they design a track okay. and they put a sphero, which they also sell there. Uh -huh. A sphero robot. Okay. Uh, they put it from one end and they ask they ask basically what require you to navigate the, the robot from one point through that track. Oh yeah, I've seen these things. Yeah. They ask kids to program. They basically you get them to use Swift Playgrounds to code a track, to move to navigate that sphero around track. Well, that's very basic coding, but yeah, yeah, it's good. Good. That's good. Good. Yeah. 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 Ye
<laughs> Andrew, next time you're in Singapore, we're going to yes. find out for us. So yeah. there are 8 to 10 of these daily classes every day. And mm -hmm. it's free, all you have to do is register at the Apple website. Singapore website. Cool. Cool. Alright, so that's yes. Apple Orchard Road. Um, got one more segment coming up. We will be right back. We're back, and we thought we were going to talk about a couple of things that we were just finished working on here yes. at the office. First one is the Mi 6. Mm -hmm. Xiaomi Mi 6. Xiaomi Mi 6. Ceramic Edition. Yes. It's a very Full disclosure, I completely yeah. forgot this was wrong. He was using it. Yeah. Well, that's not really not anymore. For sure. good reasons. Oh, yeah, oh please, enlighten me. <laughs> no, let's not, let's not make it... Why about the yeah, 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 I thought maybe to relive the experience. <laughs> yeah, I good stuff, then like, like, no, bring it down a little bit. No, no you bring it down. Fair. No. To be fair. No. You, bring it you would not fit. Okay. Start with <laughs> the good stuff. <laughs> Start with the good stuff. So though. the good stuff. I, I like the fact that it's heavy. So the ceramic addition is 182 gram, which is quite heavy, especially for a 5.15 inch device. Yeah. Okay, I want to point out on this. Every time we mention weights, Specifically, uh -huh. in that I don't think anybody actually understands. Yes. Correct. So I did the review. I didn't really weigh up to a Huawei Mate Nine. Mm. How, so how heavy is Huawei? I mean, what the bag? Bag of a bag was sugar, <laughs> it's hundred grams. Okay. Okay. Anyway, okay. so it's heavy. Okay. So the Mate Nine, which is a five point nine inch device, weighs hundred ninety gram. That's eight grams, almost. I, I, I don't know what no difference. difference. I don't know what eight grams mean. That's like two yeah, grams of sand. No, that's a long no, 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 no. I don't know where you're getting your sand. It's an exaggeration. Anyway, go ahead. <coughs> right, uh, okay, so how we can compare this is the way that we wrote an article in the uh, review. Mate 9 is 190 grams. Yes. How much is the Mate 5 last year? How heavy is it? Mate 5 was 129 grams. Yes. So yeah. this is 60 grams heavier. It's like 30% more, like a third heavier than last mm. year's model. But you because of this tech to it. Yeah. Yes. It's really like this tall. <laughs> like to the point that I held like the Nexus 6 screen was like, this is light. <laughs> yeah. Nexus 6 screen is a metal phone. Like yeah. a full metal phone. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, like, ceramic is heavier. Yeah. yeah. So, is this a good thing? It's a good thing. It's a very subjective thing. Like, some people may not like it. Um, I remember when I was at the launch, the guy was good to see. CEO was saying, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, CEO has been downgraded to the guy. He said that the, one of the biggest complaints of the V5 last year, the feedback, was that it was too light. And it's true, the V5 mm -hmm. was really light last year. I remember last year because I, had a, I, I suggested a friend buy it. He said, man, this feels like a toy phone. <laughs> Sorry, man. But, you know, it's, it's 60 grams heavier this time around. Like, to be fair, the ceramic, ceramic edition is heavier, but it's not by much. If I'm not wrong, it's like 10 milligrams heavier. Uh, the yeah, normal one is 168 grams. Yeah, it's not 20, 20 grams. Mm. 15 to 20 grams. Not that much heavier. Mm. Uh, like 3 grains of stuff. <laughs> Good, <laughs> that's me. Yo. Okay, so, so, that was what, so just for reference, all the weights in this podcast are based on grains of sand that part of this part. No, okay. Uh, so, <coughs> I don't know, I, I might like to have your phone in. Mm. How many times have you, have you had a light phone in your pocket and like, shit, I get my phone? I think I face that with me five. <laughs> right, right, because it's too light. light. Yeah. yeah. If there's a little bit of weight, like I know it's there, mm -hmm. which I, it's a good thing, I guess. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, it's heavy. They're not gonna hold it for long. Some people may not like it. Mm -hmm. That's it's a subjective thing. I like it. Um, I think everyone can like it. Female yeah. people like it. So. Uh, wait, wait aside. Uh, one of the most impressive things for the me six is the fact that it's very long lasting. Define long lasting so it's heavy and long lasting. <laughs> I don't know where this is going. What? It's like you start with Yeah, it's long lasting. Okay, so you get battery life. What do you get? You guys just at least okay. save <laughs> long battery life. It has a 3,250 mAh battery, which is actually pretty good for it's a huge device. It's huge small. Yeah, really good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we shouldn't record at night. I don't know. No, yeah, we shouldn't record at night. Should record at night. Okay, anyway, yes, let's so keep going. I can easily get five hours of screen on time with this, which is very impressive. Yeah, for a phone mm -hmm. of that size. So, how long do you go between recharge cycles? Okay. 
He's bad. He's a bad example because uh, he, he uses plays Hearthstone. Yeah, right. Plays Hearthstone. You use, so, uh, no, okay. uh, despite playing Hearthstone, you still got bro. Eight AM. Yeah, the other day at least fifteen minutes. Not bad. That's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, five hours screen on time is roughly one and a half days. Close to two if you mm-hmm. are really like. If you're concerned yeah, about yeah. it. If you're concerned about it. But I mean, it makes sense because the 1080p display and the power efficiency of the 785. Really yeah. In terms of hardware, I think that's one of the things that we should talk about. So like the mm-hmm. hardware is basically the highest end you can get on the device. True. But I, mean, I, I, I want to propose that we start judging our battery life in terms of how long can I play Pokemon Go. Oh, that's really tough. Mm. I was using a Huawei Mate 9 and it didn't last beyond 3 hours. Uh, I, I'm, on the P, I'm on the P10. It, no, no. no. Yeah. Pokemon Go. Hey, Pokemon Go drains the battery very quickly. Like, so yeah. the longer <laughs> your phone can last, the better. I think the Nexus 6P, I think when I was playing it, it got to the point that if I charge it while playing Pokemon Go, it's always going to get charge. See? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, you, you Actually, that was true. The Huawei P9 as well. Really? Like I was charging it. Uh, well, I wasn't charging. It. Girlfriend was charging. So mm-hmm. Huawei P9. It was a fast charging power bank, and it mm-hmm. wasn't charging it fast enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's it it's stuck at seven percent, and it went on six. Yeah. So uh, am I supposed to pull around? We're just gonna judge this based on Pokemon. Go. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> hardware. Uh, what we're right. talking about? Hardware. So in terms of Huawei, really is a good phone, except for the display. Maybe it's only a tiny TV display. You get 6 gigs of RAM, 120 gigs of uh, storage, 64 gig on the normal mm-hmm. version, if you have one. Um, stereo speakers, surprisingly. A dual camera, which is just yeah. because you don't have iPhone 7 Plus. You, everyone's going to have a dual camera from now on. Yeah, but we should talk about this one. I think that's a plus one, or like, I say it's plus and so minus. It's a plus yeah. minus, yeah. So, okay, I'm saying it a little bit because I use the phone a little bit mm-hmm. as well. Um, I thought the camera was surprisingly good at first. Like, first impressions, mm-hmm. I thought it was really good. Yes. I was like, oh, wow, this is actually quite good. Like, autofocus screen was good. Uh, that, so this dual camera is the same as Apple 7 Plus because the mm-hmm. second one is the Telephoto lens, so yes. it zooms in at 2x. Mm-hmm. Um, surprisingly good. So what, what made you reassess this position? So I did I, I was using it for like an hour and then he used oh, it okay. for like a two weeks and then so he said, oh man. You had <laughs> first impressions and then you didn't have any other impressions. Yes. So you stopped it. Because uh, I stopped using yeah. it. Just, like, that was probably a good place to stop. Yeah. 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 After one hour. <laughs> 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 to be fair, it was not one hour. It was more than one hour. But uh, the camera was good. Uh, mm-hmm. The autofocus speed was good. Mm-hmm. Zooming, the zoom feature was good. Portrait mode was good. Yes. And then that was all in like good lighting. Yes. So, so once the sun sets and you start shooting in low light, oh my goodness. So I kind of see it though, like, yeah, sorry. The thing is with this camera is if you enable HDR mode, sometimes when you reopen the app, it will be disabled. I don't know why. So it may be because we're running on beta build of Mi 8. Yeah. So that's a huge one thing. Yeah. So then it's a big disclaimer here. Everything you say is running on the beta build. Yeah. So it was an official beta build. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And sure. so in low light conditions, if you enable HDR, the moment you press on the shutter button, you have to wait a good two to three seconds yeah. while they process the because HDR. Because it's, it's basically runs on an older application of HDR, basically mm-hmm. shooting several yeah. Like the way that the Google Pixel does it is that it's continuously yeah. shooting. It starts taking before yeah. you press yeah. the shutter button. So, that's why it processes things so much quicker. This thing is like when you press the shutter button, it process it, it captures the frames from that point onwards. So I have no idea why Xiaomi has still not done auto HDR. Mm-hmm. That is my biggest issue with this one. Like yes. I tried HDR in the hotel room the other day um, mm-hmm. when I got the phone and it was oh man, it was, it was slow, it was sluggish. Like, mm-hmm. You don't expect this from a Snapdragon 855. Yes. I, I assume this is just simply Xiaomi doesn't have the resources to develop so many things at the same time. Uh, probably, mm-hmm. but like the camera f- software is, is, is still quite lacking. Yes. Yeah. Like I find it amazing that they decided of all the things they had to put into it, they have put in a watermark called Shot on V6 dual camera. <laughs> yeah, a lot of look, no, but that's the thing, that's the thing now. Totally unnecessary. <laughs> that's the thing now. It's just Huawei! Actually, no, Vivo has it. No, Vivo has it. It's becoming another thing. Yeah. Yeah. God. I don't like, think Oppo has it. 
I not, not yet, not yet. Not yeah, yet. The new phone coming, so it might be that. Uh, Two months down the road, you're yeah. going to see this new update, you're going to push it out, you're going to see watermarks everywhere. Uh, so, alright, let's recap <clears throat> the V6. So, good back to life, great back to life in time. Feels very premium, uh, very fast forward, 7 8, 8, 5. Camera, plus points, very good portrait mode, you can get some nice shots with it, if you're patient with it. And, yeah, bad points, uh, low light camera performance could be better, could have been more effortless to use, and the most important thing is software. Like, I've used uh, the Redmi Note 4, which was running on a consumer ready um, UI kit. That was good for the most part, but there are still li these little things that makes it not so. You don't feel like you feel like the phone is fighting against you in some ways. Like, uh, wow. okay. okay, like pulling down the notification sheet. When you put it down, you want to, you have an email. So, intuitively, you just put one finger on it and uh, swipe so, down, yeah. you will expand, correct? Yeah. With the UI 8, you, you have to it. use a uh, um, pinch to zoom or use two fingers to slide down. Why? It's very unintuitive. Well, to be fair, like, I've had problems with the midnight lock screen notifications as well. Yeah, I mean, that's also one thing that Same probably is like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I, I know you're okay. Yeah. Just let me swipe it away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, like, to be fair, like, we're using a, 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 a yeah, beta build. Build. So in our review, we mentioned that <laughs> these things may not uh, be in the final version. Yeah. Yeah, and crashing, it's expected of a better right. But the thing is, there are some things that are fundamental to me or it that are just not pleasant to use. Like, right. there is no split screen mode. Come on. It's a 5.5. 5. 1, 5. 1. Yeah, 5. Yeah, but split screen mode would be useful in a lot of ways. Uh, there's no split screen mode. I can't uh, double tap the recent app page to switch to a different app. That's a Nougat thing, right? Yeah, it's a Nougat thing. So yeah. It's really running on Nougat and it's not. It doesn't have these features. Granted, it has uh, and, uh, Google Assistant, but yeah, these little things that makes a phone pleasant to use, they don't have it. Like, why would they not include things like this? Yeah. It's just an argument for vanilla Android. You know that, right? Not really. Huawei has the double tap to switch app thing. Yeah. It's just yeah, but Huawei actually use it. Yeah. Why would I, you not use it? I, I, I wouldn't. I've never actually used it. Why? <laughs> Might be good once I get to know to actually use it, but. <coughs> so Sorry, you know, like the texting and then you just double tap to go to back to the video. Yeah, it's oh, okay. Anyway, yes. So you you interrupt. But to be fair, like sorry, yeah. you interrupt your videos to text. Why not? I mean, it depends on what video. I could be watching a Hudson video. I could be watching a Dota video. I mean, it's not urgent. Actually, it depends on who's texting. Also, that that's probably more yes. important. Uh, <laughs> to be fair, this is still a phone that is the cheapest Snapdragon 835 mm -hmm. in the market. In the market. Wow. Now, which was horrible. Yeah. This is the cheapest smartphone with Snapdragon 835 in the market right now. Yes. Uh, not yet in Malaysia, but coming very soon. Uh, mm -hmm. Register and soon. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about like less than 2,000, right? I think we can safely assume it will be sub 2,000. For the base model. For the because the base model, model is like 1,005, 1,600. Yeah. So that's, that's, you're talking that's about like OnePlus 3T, cheaper than OnePlus 3T. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For that kind of money, like you're talking about, you're fighting against like Samsung Galaxy A7. Yes, you know, Oppo, mm -hmm. R9, mm -hmm. like talking It's a no-brainer. <laughs> yes. Correct. Yes. yes. I got a budget, I'm going to... Oh, well, sure. Still, still, this phone. It's still this phone. I mean, value for money, that really is your niche game plan and it works for that. Yeah. But if it's a flagship phone, why not just make it better? Like, make it like an absolute go-to choice instead of, oh, I have to what? be dealing with the sub software of like that, you know. I mean, it's not bad. It's just, it could be better. Yeah, there's an argument for that, of course. Uh, it's just, you're talking about price points. I think in the end of the day, it's just, uh, it, they could, and they mm -hmm. could have made the absolute best one, like, it would be like the remake, but well, not the absolute best one. No. But you know, it's interesting. It's not, I, I, and then suddenly, it's going to be, sorry, suddenly it's going to be priced at a level where people don't associate Xiaomi with. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, Xiaomi is doing this, or they're forgetting about their core customers. Mm -hmm. That is the problem that came yeah, up with the Mino 2. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, the next thing is that as you do is to improve this thing, you need to pump in a lot more yeah. money. So that's mm -hmm. going to increase their costs. And Xiaomi themselves yeah. have admitted they don't make a lot of money off these phones. Yeah. 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 No. Software is supposed to be their focus, right? Like, that's no, no, the ecosystem. Oh, right. It's not about software, it's about the ecosystem. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they want as many people as possible to get on this phone, and they don't care if they make money on it. Mm -hmm. It's very awkward. Yeah. yeah. And this is like 
the, the long game. They're willing to wait out the competition. Correct. So, yeah. Yep. Talk about value for money. Let's talk about a device that has absolutely zero value for money. What? Wow. No, this is the <laughs> kind of the complete <laughs> opposite. No, wait. Who in their right mind would think this is better? Oh, okay. yeah. No, no, no. It's right. something I would not buy. I don't know if I can. Okay. Okay. What okay. we're talking okay. about is the Acer Predator 21X. Yeah. Uh, Gaming laptop. I got my rabbit ears up. Uh, anyway. 39,999. <laughs> $39,000. Enough to have room for a house, enough to buy a car, enough to buy. Uh, enough to call No, it's not. Really really low cost. No, like You're not looking at low cost houses. Yeah, you're going to buy $40,000 gaming laptop and you're going to buy a house. No, if you're going to buy a $40,000 gaming laptop, yeah. you own several houses. Probably, hopefully, at least. Anyway, it's $40,000 you get. It packs every possible thing you could want in a gaming device. Laptop, desktop. Mm -hmm. Except the fact that it doesn't fit on your lap. Oh, you could. You could. It it's eight and a half kilos. It's you probably not going to fall off your lap. You so, how many grains of sand is that? Uh, <laughs> 8,500. That's so weird. <laughs> 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 it is eight and a half kilos. Uh, it's got a 21 by 9 W Full HD. It's a white Full HD. Uh, 21 by 9 aspect ratio display. Mm -hmm. It's curved. Sigma aspect ratio. Yes, and it's NVIDIA G Sync certified. So it's 120 Hz NVIDIA G Sync certified mm -hmm. display. GTX 1080 SLI. A desktop grade. I think it was Intel Core i7 7870 HK. An overclockable one. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, the K indicates it's unlocked. Yeah. 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM. And mm -hmm. there are five storage bays. Yeah. Three of which are already populated. So it's two SSDs, two one terabyte SSDs, and one one terabyte hard disk. Two extra ones are open. Mm -hmm. Five cooling fans. Three are running on that Acer design Aeroblade fans. Mm -hmm. Supposedly very good. Uh, what else is there? What is there? Hardware on set. Mechanical keyboard. Mm -hmm. Cherry MX Brown. Good choice. Uh, there's a reversible touchpad slash numpad. Mm -hmm. So it's both sides. What else is there? Uh, there's a ma magnetic armrest. Oh, and it comes with a Pelican carry case. Yes, it looks really like easy. it's enough. Yeah, doesn't know what a Pelican carry case is. They're indestructible. It's, yeah, yeah. it's one of those big, hard plastic cases, the black yeah. colored ones. I'm fairly certain a large amount of the price comes from carry cases. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> it's from the carry cases. Probably 3000 again. Because <laughs> those are like legit good. Anyway. Uh, I've seen Pelican cases that size for the last time. Pelican saw here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My friend owns it. Oh, okay. Then a case that size costs like 20,000 ringgit. There you go. Half the price. <laughs> they didn't the case. <laughs> I mean, the, the first time I heard of a Pelican case was actually for the PS Vita. Pelican case for the PS Vita? Yeah, it was a thing. It was unnecessary. It was actually not that expensive. I think it's like I completely unnecessary. 300 ringgit? Why? No, no. How much is this PS Vita? Uh, at the time, about 1000 plus. Yeah, so we pay about 30-40% off the PS Vita for a case. For a case. <laughs> anyway, for let's go back to the thing about that. We did some benchmarks and it's obviously like a really, really good gaming laptop. Mm -hmm. uh, Temperature-wise, it's actually really good. Even after overclocking, the processor was the only one that was hitting 90 degrees and above. Okay. The GPU never hit past 76 degrees. Okay, that's good. So all um, the cooling, so just tell them all the cooling is centered around the GPUs. No, there are four, four cooling areas. Okay. One is a general fan for the system. There are four. So one is for the processor, two for the G, each GPU, and one more for the system. There are five, I don't know why the other one. <laughs> so the Predator Stance software lets you overclock, also lets you monitor the temperatures, lets you change the RGB lighting. And the last thing that's pretty cool, you can monitor, you can actually tweak the fan speeds of each individual fan in the system. Nice. You can maximize max, the maximum fan speed is about 4,500 RPM for 4,500 RPM, yes. Uh, for all the fans, <coughs> which is great because like uh, even uh, automatic speeds, it never hit 4,500 RPM. Mm -hmm. In mode, that's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> but system. I don't know. The, the, well, huge device, man. Like five cooling fans. Yes. Yeah, it's, so it sounds like a jet fighter in that one. You know, it's got so like five speakers. No, but let's put this way: you're not concerned about how loud it is. You want it to be really loud because yeah. it's forty thousand ringgit. 
<laughs> you want people to look at more. <laughs> okay. This is something you bring up to be noticed. Yeah. This is something you will not bring up. Yes, you have to. Yeah, no. This is something that goes up to be noticed. Yeah. Um, Your land party, you slap that on the table. Okay. Like how you know people wear like really expensive sneakers. This is the, yeah. like the gaming laptop version of it. Like Forty thousand ringgit. What else am I supposed to say? Like uh, the curve display. Curve display is good. Like it has Toby eye tracking. It's mm-hmm. completely useless. You could probably shave like two thousand bucks <laughs> off the retail price. Yeah. Right? I admit, Asus slaps the Toby eye tracking on a lot of things. No, things not just Asus. Everyone, and yeah. I believe that Toby it's is aggressively like putting, like approaching people like, hey, put this in, like, <laughs> yeah, like, we're not going to sell this price at like, we're not going to sell this really expensive view. This is not monitors. It's mm-hmm. on gaming laptops. It's on desktops. Yeah. I think the first one to do was MSI, the GTA. Yes, I tried it first. I tried it. Uh, it's, yeah, it's horrible, right? I mean, it's Honestly, fine, it, there's input lag no, everywhere. It, there's, if, when there's input lag, second, it gets confused by glasses. Oh, okay. oh so, so I, uh, I was at TGS last year, yeah. and they had one of the Dell. The new yes, Dell the Dell Gaming Wearables, right? Yeah. yeah. So that was on display, and they had this really weird thing when it's like um, spaceship thing. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Blow them up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What the worst thing that happened to me is there was that avatar talking to some lady. And yes, oh, no, great job. <laughs> yes. So what happened was I was looking around the screen, but because it saw my glasses, all it illuminated was the lady's chest. <laughs> oh, this, yeah. I'm like, oh my, like what? Oh my god. Oh, I see. Anyway, okay, yeah, so they, they had that at the local lunch. Last yeah. Time. No, it doesn't. It doesn't like glasses. Mm. So it doesn't work. Uh, very few games support it. Can you imagine yeah. playing Assassin's Creed with this? No, it doesn't. Like, it just doesn't work. Anyways, I can see what some games that it could work with. Uh, I think the only games. I mean, they have a larger library now, but like the most high-profile games are like uh, Tom Clancy's. No, no, this is, this is this technology is for flight simulators. Okay, yeah. yes, that kind of yeah. DCS, all that. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Okay, so this, that's what it's for. So marketing totally wrong games for that. Yeah, completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. so eye tracking systems there, uh, curved display, surprisingly immersive. That's actually the first time I was actually using a curved display, uh, well, curved display laptops, the first in the world, but like mm-hmm. curved display in general. In general, because you know, we have some curved monitors before. But, yeah. uh, it's surprisingly good. Like, obviously, for 40,000 ringgit, it shouldn't be a surprise. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> it should be good. Oh, and okay. there's like five storage space, you probably should never ever run out of space. Even if you don't have SSDs inside. Don't, 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 don't tap the people. Wow. So no, don't. Don't, don't put 64 gigs inside. Wow. Like, so, someone is going to fit in two terabytes for you already. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Okay, anyway. That's, someone's going to try. That's that. Uh, so here's my question. So yes. we all know that the curved monitor is... Uh, it, it's going to leave a gap when you close it. There is a gap, and there is mm-hmm. flaps at the top as well if yes. you push it down a little bit. Yes. Did you feel like you were going to break anything? No. It's eight and a half kilos. So we put it this way. It's eight and a half kilos. You push it down, like, of course you can go all the way. It doesn't close all the way because mm-hmm. it's curved, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, there was flex, and I was talking to a front man, and I was like, hey, like, you know, you, you, one finger is enough to flex that display. Yes. Like, if you put it right, up, right in the middle where the Easter Project logo is. Mm-hmm. And he's like, uh, yes, it does, but what they have is also like a protective metal frame at the back. Ooh, of, the, of the display. So the back is actually plastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, inside it is like a metal sheet to kind of protect it. I'm not sure how protective it is. That's why they tell you never to bring it in the backpack. Then again, it's eight and a half kilos. You should never bring it in the backpack. No, I mean, you could be doing like maybe seal training and put it there for the extra weight. Uh-huh. Right. It will be a break by the end of this. You might as well carry it on the back of your set. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> you have to count them <laughs> individually. Oh, 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 um, anyway, the, the whole point of this is actually, I don't think Acer wants you to even buy this laptop. I don't know if they don't want to Because buy you it. see, the whole point, everyone is trying to say, like, you know what, like, there's no value in it. There is no value in it. Like, mm. you could buy a car, right? You could buy a car. You could buy and put a down payment for a very low, low cost house. You could put, like, a, you could build. Build a really good gaming PC several, for less than half a price. Really right? Yes. You could open a shop and run a cyber cafe with no Anyway, ah. get a soft load <laughs> and then create a down payment for it. But the whole point is this is Acer trying to tell the world that it too can do really good things when it comes to PC gaming. 
But I don't think anyone really doubted them. No, because it's a brand new brand. Like yeah, you're, you're fighting the... against like you're fighting against like MSI. established brands like MSI, which yeah. people already associate with gaming. Yeah, yeah. MSI, yeah. ROG, even Alienware to some extent. But that's the thing. But mm-hmm. while it's new, it we like Asus gaming stuff mm-hmm. because they were like, cheap. Not as cheap, but they, they were cheap. Good. Good. Nitro was cheap. Yes, and yeah. it was good for what it was. Yes, because like that was what it was. Like so, I think what they're trying to do is. Trying to move away from that fact that they are, we always associate Acer with building cheap stuff. No, but I, I've reviewed one of the Predators. It was great. Yeah, exactly. And it wasn't cheap. That was the first generation Predator yeah. 15, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 15. 15 then. Yeah. It was 17 or 15. No, 17. It was the big one. It was the big one. But that's. <clears throat> they don't need this. It was this really, stuff is pretty good. Yeah, that's what they only made. They only made 300 of these. Like, it's, it's, it's meant to, like, ignite. Conversation, but like yeah. you saw how announcement was made. Like it was much better than reviews, sadly. <laughs> 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 like, well, I'm that anyway, um, it's meant to ignite conversation. It's meant to associate people like, oh yeah, like he said it, like this crazy PC, right? Mm-hmm. So it, the idea is not so much for people to buy it. Like it's the same conversation that we had with that liquid cool gaming laptop from uh, Asus. Asus. Yeah. 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 No, Which it's... we actually heard only so like. Three, three, three. No, no. One of it was the competition who bought it. Just yes, to we'll, we'll try to break it down. Uh, it down. Okay. <laughs> so I'm assuming the same thing can happen with the furniture. <laughs> well, that's good. Much is new, except the curved display. No, they're probably gonna see how it's built. Ah. Yeah, how you're really yeah, they're they're like, oh, it's actually using cheap parts here, cheap parts there. Like, yeah. Trying to tell the world. Yeah. Anyway, um, so you know, you break it down so you can tell the boss like, <laughs> why haven't we built this? Because that's what. Yeah. So. What we can see, this is like uh, another metaphor is actually this is like the concept car mm-hmm. for Acer basically. The technology is going to trickle down, hopefully, because that, that, that Triton thing is really the. The Triton thing, thing is not new. Triton's. It was uh, launched in April. Yeah. Um, two. Well, last so, uh, so the technology is, I don't think it's much new stuff. I mean, the Aeroblade actually is new. Oh, the, yeah, but I think it's the that's not older new. generation Aeroblade. Oh, is it? Yeah, 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 it's it's not, was a new one, right? Yeah. 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 So, but Aeroblade was before that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah Aeroblade was before yeah, yeah. the uh, Predator. So the thing was still there. Yeah. So that's, I think that's how they're approaching this, that's how they're positioning this. They don't really want you to buy it. Like, they're only 300 units, and most of them are probably going to like media for review anyway. Maybe. Because number 233. And like, the US review units all had different numbers to it. So. Hmm. Yeah, we didn't even get to bring it back here. Yeah, no, there's only one unit in the entire country. We'll just leave it with us, and we find. Sadly, I think it's back in HQ. I mean, so get Andrew to lift. <laughs> so there are forty. It's, it's forty thousand ringgit. If you want to buy one, you can't even buy it in store. You have to send an email to request for a quotation, and from there you make the payment. They'll ship one for to you from Taiwan mm-hmm. for forty thousand. Maybe so I'm saying this 40,000 ringgit includes the shipping I, cost. I don't know, but I'm going to say yes. Probably yes, I'm going to say yes. You're going to ship a package that big, that It's heavy. huge, yeah, by the way, like, they are, like it's, it was like the size of like the height of the package, right? Which Because the protective case comes with an external package, the, 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 the cardboard box. Uh, yeah. the box of it. It's about the size of a 10, 11 year old kid, like that's the height of it, like it's huge. Yeah, that, that's mm-hmm. the thing. So, and it's heavy. <laughs> Because the 8 kilos is the laptop itself, it's not it's not the case. It has two power bricks, mind you. Oh, that's not new for PCs. Yes, two power bricks. Uh, uh, but, well, it's pretty well padded. Like Two power bricks, the keycaps, the additional keycaps. That's the, there's like some Predator swag. Um, swag. Do you really need Predator swag? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cool. There's a lanyard. And, uh, there's a lot of padding for the case. And there's the that? case itself, which is... I'm assuming that this forty thousand ringgit price tag includes the case, the shipping. Yeah, it's, like, it's nine thousand US dollars for what for the, what it's worth. So it's about there. Uh, yeah, there about shipping and the case. Yeah, Because yeah. why? Why would you ship something that big? Look at it. Why would you buy such a thing? You know, the whole point of it is just not there. Yeah. I probably would if I could. Though. I totally wouldn't. Well, you can't the money. Did this. This is the kind of thing a rich person would buy. Yes. It's completely pointless. Yes. But you must avoid it. Yeah. So I'm really about it. Yeah. If I can buy that, 
I don't think I'll put the F. You mean you mean you would spend on the pirates instead? And that had an installment plan. I don't know if this one has an installment plan. You should ask. Yeah. Should wow. Send an email. I mean, nine years to get it off? Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah, yeah. we're going to pay that one. Four, three, four hundred per month. Sure. I mean, you used to come out in a month. How many years have you known? Yes. That's not a good answer. No. Nine years. Generation of cloud GPU for you. We would have evolved into beings of pure energy by then. Nine years. Yeah. Optimistic. Twenty. Twenty seven. On that note. Twenty twenty six. Yeah. Good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, man, I did a tiny story. Yeah. On that note, that Andrew cannot do math, that is a point we're done for this week. Uh, yeah. So, thanks for listening. We will be back next week. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye.